Hi, Sean Wheeler here. I'm a clinical hypnotherapist with 10 years of experience, having seen over 1,500 clients. My website is heartbreakhypnotist.com, and I'm going to talk a little bit today about something on the minds of a lot of, well, whether it's my prospective clients or just people out there in general who are looking to get help, um, which is what is the difference between hypnotherapy and traditional therapy or psychotherapy and you know the, the thing that I always say when people ask me that question is uh, you know because I kind of have like this sense of humor as I say well the difference is that hypnotherapy works you know and then I wait for the laughter and well you know when people ask me seriously what the difference is and I say well first of all you know regular psychotherapy or, or traditional therapy or counseling you know typically what you do is you go in and week after week or month after month you sit down with one of these um, with a psychotherapist or a counselor and you talk about your problems you talk about the past you talk about what went wrong um, hour after hour week after week and from what I've heard uh, you know from my own clients and from other people is that they don't really get much better meaning they don't leave the session feeling any better than they felt when they walked in um, they could have been in therapy for a year two years five years sometimes 20 years and not noticeably um, be uh, any happier or notice any significant changes with the problem that they've been discussing for all these years. Now, what they do sometimes gather is insight. Um, so, for example, the clients that I see who have been through therapy for a long time, they know exactly what the name is for the problem that they have. You know whether they're codependent or whether they have, uh, you know, ADHD or whether they have, you know, some other problem. They can tell exactly what the technical name is for it, um, but they still have no idea how the hell to fix what it is that's going wrong. And so it seems as though the, the overwhelming drive behind traditional therapy to just get to the center or to discover the root or the origin of the problem um, of what went wrong is not producing very good results. It's been going on for a long time now, um, more than 100 years, um, and some people know exactly why they're screwed up and they still aren't any better or happier than they were before they found out. And yet there are others who have been trying to figure out where it all went wrong and still haven't been able to nail it down and find that true cause. So first of all, the idea that you uh, will magically lose your problems when you discover what went wrong in your life or where the problems began is false because many people know why they're broken and still aren't better. And then the other thing is that, well, it takes a long time to talk about all the horrible stuff from the past. Um, and some people want to get better fast and they don't want to talk about stuff for a year or five years or 20 years before they become happier in their lives. And then you've got the whole issue of, well, you know, going back and week after week talking about things that are bad or that were bad or traumatic or stressful or troublesome situations in your life makes you more depressed. I mean, just think about it. You know, all you have to do is hear a song um, that's associated with a breakup that you went through or, uh, you know, a death or a loss that you experienced and the feelings come back, you know. So just imagine going back week after week and talking about all the bad stuff. You end up leaving the session with the, with the psychotherapist feeling worse than you felt when you walked in. And that, unfortunately, is the experience for many people. So um, what happens with hypnotherapy? What's the difference? Well, when I first see a client uh, who may have years and years of problems, as I've seen many of them who've been for 20 or 30 years in therapy or who were you know, abused when they were five and here they are and they're 50 years old and I'm seeing them as a client and they have self-esteem problems um, or they don't like themselves very much, you know, I can have that person feeling better within one hour. And I don't say that to overstate. I don't say it to boast or brag. Um, I say it because it's true and it's happened many times um, with my clients in the past. We spend some time during that initial interaction talking about their past and what went wrong. And remember, most of the time these people know uh, because they've talked about it, worked on it, you know, done therapy for it, and they know all the specifics about what went wrong. Um, but that's a very small part of a session with me um, because what I care more about about is what they want you know so uh, it may be that someone does have very poor self-esteem it may be that someone was abused in every way imaginable when they were a child but they're coming to see me because in their current life in the present there's something that they want to do or want to have or whether it's a relationship or a better social life or a better career or or more peace of mind that they don't know how to get or that they feel like they're incapable of getting on their own and so rather than continuing to delve into the past and talking about all the bad stuff my job and, and my approach is to direct their attention to well here's how you want things to be and when I ask them well you know what stops you from getting that you know what's really holding you back 
you know, oftentimes they'll see that other than the past and these memories, it's nothing. You know, and then it's really just a question of, well, teaching them, you know, at, a, at an unconscious level, how to think about themselves, how to process what happened in the past, how to let certain things go so that they can start feeling better. Now, the cool part is this, is that we are, you know, really these biofeedback machines and that whatever we think about tends to influence how we feel. So if you, if you just take a moment and think about a funny joke that you heard or, you know, something that you saw in a movie that made you laugh, you'll start to feel like giggling again, you know. Uh, if you think about a really embarrassing time of your life, you'll start to feel embarrassed. Um, if you think about a time when you were really depressed, you'll start to feel that way. So uh, hypnosis is a really good tool for helping people to change how they're feeling using their thoughts and attention. So I begin to, when I have a person hypnotized, to teach them, really through experience, um, how to think differently. Uh, not only about their problem, but also about themselves and about the future. Um, and when they do that, well, their feelings begin to change. You know, even if a person's been suffering or has been miserable or depressed for years and years and years, if they just begin to think and to believe that things are gonna get better, they start to feel better right away. Um, which is why you don't even really have to resolve or solve or really even understand everything about what's gone wrong in your life in order to start feeling better. So again, with hypnotherapy, if the hypnotherapist is skilled and experienced and really knows what they're doing, and I believe to possess those characteristics at this point in my career, um, then you could take a person who's been dealing with some really bad stuff for a long time and have them leave the session feeling lighter, um, feeling more confident, uh, happier, more present, um, and that's just one interaction if done correctly. Uh, if I have a person who's looking to heal some old wounds and, and build some really positive resources within themselves, you know, if I work with them for even three or four or five or six sessions um, over the period of a couple of months, they will experience a noticeable change. Um, and, and oftentimes they will report back to me that two sessions of hypnotherapy did more for them than 20 years of traditional therapy. And I'm not making up that quote. I've actually had several clients say things similar um, to that to me uh, about years and years of therapy, no benefits, a couple of sessions of, of uh, hypnotherapy with me, and they can actually do the things that they didn't feel like they could do before. Um, so the speed of the results is noticeably different. The number of sessions uh, between hypnotherapy and traditional therapy is noticeably different. Uh, and the approach, uh, the whole ideology about it um, is very different. It's not a focus on finding out what went wrong. It's a focus on helping a person to get what they want or to be the way that they want to be. And you don't have to understand everything about a person's past or talk about you know, lousy experiences over, over and over again and relive them in order to help somebody um, to change their behaviors to get what they want to feel better. It's also very important to mention that hypnosis in and of itself is nothing more than a state of mind and a tool, okay? So think about it this way. If someone goes to a hypnotherapist who really doesn't have any experience, doesn't really know all that much uh, about you know, how to help people, um, they can hypnotize you and you know, they can say some nice things to you, but if they don't push the right buttons, if they don't communicate with you while you're under hypnosis properly, then it's very possible that no noticeable changes will take place. Um, now, does that mean that hypnosis or hypnotherapy didn't work? Well, not necessarily. What it means is that your interactions with that particular therapist weren't very effective. Remember, it's just a tool. You can be hypnotized, um, and all that means is you can experience a deep relaxation, a change in your focus for a period of time, but if no suggestions are given, if no helpful words are said, um, if there's nothing that takes place within your experience that would produce a change, then there will be no change. You know, And that's not a statement about hypnosis, that's a statement about the operator, the therapist, the person who's using it as a tool. Um, so to say that hypnotherapy doesn't work uh, you know, because you know a friend who tried it and didn't get results is no different from saying that, you know, well, mechanics don't work because I took my car to this place and they didn't fix it properly. You know, every profession has you know, people within it who have different capabilities and different degrees of experience and skill. So um, hypnotherapy um, is just one approach and there are a wide range of hypnotherapists of varying degrees of uh, talent and experience. Um, and so keep in mind that, you know, this thing, this myth about hypnosis being this panacea or this miracle cure, um, it does come from some real experiences that people have in which 
the changes that are made or the changes that take place seem too good to be true because people's expectations are that you shouldn't be able to change that quickly and that it should take a long time and you know all this kind of stuff based on their previous experiences with traditional therapy. Um, but uh, that, that type of a response only takes place um, when there's a, a real confluence of different factors all coming into play at once. You've got an experienced hypnotherapist or someone who really knows what they're doing. You've got a person who is open and honest. There's a good connection between those two people. And uh, the state of hypnosis is used to deliver suggestions or, or metaphors or uh, you know, experiences in a way that really pushes that person's buttons. And when those conditions are met and happens in the right way, then yes, very immediate, dramatic, noticeable, and sometimes what people would call miraculous changes uh, do take place. But in and of itself, hypnosis is, is really just a tool that we use to communicate with people uh, in a way that, that tends to produce those changes more quickly. Um, so keep, keep that in mind. Uh, I, don't, I didn't mean to use uh, this particular video as, as, a, as an excuse to bash traditional counselors or, or therapists. My experience is that most of them are uh, well-meaning, um, most of them are very intelligent, and most of them are trained very well in what they studied. Um, and you know, their training, in my opinion, uh, my experience is what is flawed. It's based on flawed assumptions about what will work, and uh, it, it's sort of um, the way that it's executed is um, is not likely to produce the kind of results that most people want or would hope for from therapy. So, uh, and yet I know that there are um, probably traditional counselors out there who do sometimes get great results, um, but it, it likely is nothing compared to the results they could get. Uh, if they were communicating with people more effectively using a tool like hypnosis or using a different approach. Focus more on what the person wants than on where they've been. So um, I'll be back giving uh, you know, some more information about different aspects of hypnotherapy um, that I think you'll find interesting. So if you haven't already, please do subscribe to my YouTube channel. I think it's called Pure Hypnosis. Um, and uh, you know, look for more information in the future. And if you uh, have any comments or any questions, feel free to leave them in the comment section below or email me directly, uh, sean at heartbreakhypnotist.com. Um, if I receive questions, I'll be happy to come on and do a video blog, answer them for everybody. Um, and that'd be a really good way of, of getting more and more good information out there uh, about hypnotherapy uh, and dispelling a lot more of those myths so that more people can get the help that they need um, and uh, you know experience more happiness in life. So thanks again for watching and I look forward to uh, hopefully seeing you again soon.